All right. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening and welcome to the 20th annual last lecture for the class of 2022. My name is Jay Rojas and I work in the Department of Student Experience. And to begin this evening, I'd like to acknowledge that the main campus of the University of Guelph resides on the ancestral lands of the Ottawandaran people and the treaty lands of the and the territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit. We recognize the significance of the dish with one spoon covenant and on this land offer our respect to our Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee and Métis neighbors as we strive to strengthen our relationship with them. As I reflect on where I'm currently speaking from, I encourage you to do the same. Today, wherever you're joining us in person or if you're joining us online, hi. I want to acknowledge uh, that it's important to remember the land that we that we learn on, that we lead from, and where we love and where we work. And it's in this spirit that I welcome you. Welcome to the students, faculty, senior administrator, staff, friends, family, community members, and alumni who have gathered virtually and in person with us today. Wherever you are in the world or in Canada, whatever time zone or geographical location you're in, we're glad you're joining us. And most importantly, a very special welcome to our lecturers and to you who have brought us all together this evening, the class of 2022. For those joining us virtually on Teams Live, feel free to use the Q&A tab to ask questions or share comments with each other. Closed caption has been enabled and are also offered in Arabic, simplified Chinese, French, Spanish, Hebrew, and Hindi. Before we begin our first lecture, I'd like to introduce, introduce someone whose job it is to support your student experience, contributing to the development of the person, scholar, and citizen of University of Guelph's students. To officially welcome you on behalf of the University of Guelph is our Interim Vice Provost of Student Affairs, Irene Thompson. <laughs> Lovely to see everybody here. So nice to be in a room face to face with everybody. Well, welcome to the 2022 last lecture. My name is, as Jay said, is Irene Thompson, and I'm the interim vice provost student affairs, a role that has been a, a wonderful privilege for me to have since September. Today marks the 20th time that a graduating class has gathered together to commemorate the completion of your academic journey this is a special occasion for many, many reasons. For me, I'm particularly excited to join your celebration as it marks two decades since I participated in the original planning committee when the first last lecture was developed. Our planning took place under the leadership of today's alumni speaker, Rich Appiah, who, who convened the committee and served as the chair. Our university careers, like life, are marked by milestone events. Just a short time ago, you gathered as an entering class to be inducted into the University of Guelph family. As entering your students, you participated in various orientation events, and that included a welcome for new students, known also as the induction of scholars. There, you were formally welcomed into the U of G community. Your admission into the university was a big accomplishment. At the induction ceremony, you were told that you were not only entering the university as a student, but that we were developing a relationship with you, welcoming you as a valued member of our community. You were encouraged to take advantage of everything that our community had to offer, to experience the rights and the privileges that come along with being a community member. You were introduced to our Griffin values, built on a foundation of respect, caring, determination, engagement, and authenticity. Your academic journey was mapped out for you through the academic course curriculum, but your path and how you got there was yours to discover. Some of you chose a more direct route, while others encountered life challenges along the way. Still others opted to explore ideas, experiences, and diversions along their journey. 
Tradition and ceremony have important roles within our university setting. And just like we marked your induction into our community, we mark the completion of your academic program and your transition from students to alumni through the formality and ceremony of convocation. Our last lecture is also about tradition, but with less formality. Our last lecture allows you to gather together with colleagues and friends that you have met along the way during your journey with us. Each year, each class is different, is unique with its own experiences, stories, memories and challenges. Each member of the class of 2022 has their own individual experience and story that's unique to them. Each of you are also connected through the collective experience of being a student. You have each experienced the joys and stressors of student life, forging new relationships, perhaps meeting life partners, learning to live on a budget, embracing your newfound freedom, and perhaps paying the consequences for overindulgences. This last lecture allows you to celebrate your accomplishments and mark your success in overcoming any challenges experienced along the way. The last lecture allows you to re reflect on how you have changed over the short time being here with us at the University of Guelph community, how you have grown as a person, scholar and citizen, how your motivation and drive has changed as you engaged more deeply with your academic interests, channeling you towards your chosen career path. It has been a time of tremendous growth as you gained awareness of your personal impact on your environment and on others. It has also hopefully awakened you a sense of social responsibility as you transition from our university community into the larger world. As the interim vice provost student affairs, I'm proud of you, the class of 2022. Your academic life and life journey has been an exceptional one. Your memories and experiences will be imbued with the stories of the COVID pandemic that altered each of our lives. You should be proud of the resilience you demonstrated it has not been seamless or without challenges, but you persevered, drew on each other and the community for support, and continued the pursuit of your academic journey and dreams. You made it. You are here today with only your final exams and papers to complete before you are called to take your turn walking across the convocation stage, receiving your hood and having your degree conferred upon you. So embrace this occasion. Listen to the speakers that you've selected to represent you. Class of 2022 Griffins, this moment is yours. Thanks, Irene. Uh, thank you for that welcome message. And thank you for the reminder that we're joined this evening by some of the most determined and caring Griffins uh, to help us all improve our diverse communities. Over the last four or more years, we've had the privilege of developing a relationship with you, the class of 2022, and we thank you for that opportunity. The last lecture began here at the University of Guelph many years ago with a purpose of celebrating you, the graduating student. Today, we've come together and are celebrating through reflecting on your time at Guelph and your remarkable achievements. Today is a time to celebrate those who are with us those who couldn't attend, and to also remember those who have left us too soon. It's a time of excitement, sadness, and bittersweetness. The program for this evening is straightforward. You'll hear from three different members of our Griffin family. They'll be speaking on the themes of reflection, celebration, inspiration, and determination. One address will be from a classmate of yours who is also in the final days of earning their degree, another, by, another one by our faculty member, voted by you, and finally, we have an address from a special member of our alumni family. So let's get started. Every year, graduating students are invited to apply and compete to be the student last lecturer. A selection committee composed of staff, faculty, and of course, graduating students make a final decision. This year's choice of candidates represented a difficult decision because quite frankly, so many of you are just amazing. Thank you to everyone who took the time to apply and present to the committee and, to those, and thank you to those who wrote letters of support for applicants. The process demonstrated to us once again, the incredible students that make up our university and the caring community 
they've helped build for us all to enjoy. Like many of you, this year's student last lecture has developed a love for our Griffin family. She understands the Griffin commitments and have embraced it during her journey here. She is from Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, and is a high energy, soon to be 2022 University of Guelph graduate from the Bachelor of Engineering Biomedical Engineering program. She sought after various opportunities on campus from the Engineering Society to the Outdoors Club to the Varsity Squash Team. She inspired to leave no stone unturned at the University of Guelph. She has held the position of coordinator of the Guelph Engineering Leadership Program, where she hosted local and national workshops and the Vice President of Social Affairs of the Engineering Society organizing events for the School of Engineering. She has also participated in multiple intramurals, national and international conferences, and has been involved as a student researcher seeking opportunities to integrate social justice into the engineering curriculum. She is a University of Guelph President Scholar and a recipient of the Summer League Humanita Humanitarian Award for her involvement with the Indigenous Health and Adaptation to Climate Change Project and research regarding challenges of implementing technology into remote Amazonian communities. She has also volunteered as a skating coach and hospice baker in the community. She plans on continuing to improve life and carry on our Griffin values by pursuing a career in advancing health care in Northern Ontario. She is an avid traveler and a lover of adventure, sunshine into her life, or lover of adventure, baking and her Italian culture and all things outdoors. She's also grateful for, grateful for all the people who have brought a little more sunshine into her life over the past few years and is looking forward to sharing experiences lessons and laughs as a student last lecture. I'm pleased to welcome this year's student last lecture, Tiana Bresson. Hey guys. <laughs> cool. Super fancy. Hello. Quick thumbs up from the back. Nice, good feedback. All right. Ooh. <laughs> okay. I'm honored to be with you here today for your commencement from one of the finest universities in the world. That was a direct quote from Steve Jobs at Stanford University in 2005. <laughs> now, although this is not Stanford, and unlike Steve Jobs, we will be graduating, I am even more honored to be standing alongside you all and giving today's last lecture. So, I'd like to begin by saying, congratulations, Griffins. Uh, some of you may know me as the girl who ran Corn Roast, maybe as the girl from Sault Ste. Marie, the city that everyone somehow has a connection to, or as the girl who joined the squash team, having played squash only twice in her life. If you don't know me, my name is Tiana, and I'm graduating from biomedical engineering, and I'm only one of hundreds of us entering this next pivotal point in our lives. As you join me here today, I want you to reflect on the two things that me and you have in common right at this very moment. One, we're graduating, and that means we officially earned our right to take photos around campus in all the classic spots and poses, uh, despite literally any weather conditions. And two, we all love food. <laughs> this next photo was taken immediately following those graduation pictures on campus. Some may say we were a tad overdressed for burgers. <laughs> it's no secret that the University of Guelph has been ranked with the best food on campus in the country for over three years. Yet, despite having wood oven pizza at our fingertips at Creelman's, 24-hour crepes at Mountain, and fresh Mongolian grill, we still managed to keep Domino's in business. <laughs> <laughs> but why am I talking about food? Getting there. I'd like to welcome you all to your last lecture. Food, you are what you eat, and the parallel to our experiences by an engineer with little to no qualifications, but do any of us really have any? <laughs> Today's lecture will be a new take on experiences and lessons learned throughout the past few years at the University of Guelph. Through the lens of five food and eating recommendations, you've probably heard multiple times in your life. One, we need variety. Although you may have consumed the same past abilities order for over a week, or maybe you meal prepped because you were tight on time and ended up eating the same lentil soup every night for dinner, we can't deny that we need variety. Food variety is important because different foods have different nutrients. Different nutrients are important because they give us energy and are essential for growth. Similarly, our experiences at the University of Guelph were all very different. Not because of nutrients per se, but because of the purpose they served in our lives. 
The university and city of Guelph brought opportunity. Maybe that included meeting new friends through intramurals like bubble soccer, trying new things like pottery classes downtown or rock climbing on campus, or maybe it was volunteering somewhere new, like a donkey sanctuary. From academics to clubs to part-time jobs, the past few years were packed with different experiences that added value or nutrients, if you will, to our lives, giving us energy to continue doing the harder school stuff and allowing us to grow into who we are today. Not only do we need variety in our lives or on our place, we also need it in our lives. As we begin to get jobs or specialize, I want us to remember that one of the most beautiful things about university and life was the variety of experiences we can partake in. So I'd like to ask you, what variety have you had up until now? And what kind of variety would you like in the future? Two, drink water. Water helps to digest food. For today's purposes in comparing food and experience, water symbolizes the people who helped digest experiences. Maybe it was calling home to vent about a midterm, a good group of friends that got you through literally any technical assignment, <laughs> uh, Bob with his dogs and service with a smile, or maybe it was the professor who convinced you that dropping out of your last semester to open a bakery maybe isn't the best idea. <laughs> He's sitting right there, thanks. Um, <laughs> many people have contributed to our experiences, whether being there with us, supporting us afterwards, or even just by listening. Continue to surround yourself with new and amazing people and be kind to others. Why did I use water as an analogy? If you know me, you would, you would know that I wouldn't last more than an hour without my two liter jug. So this is more just me trying to get people on the bandwagon. <laughs> Three, we need balance. If there's anything we should remember from the four food groups, I think we can agree that balance is essential, but I'm not talking about balancing greens and whole grains. Throughout the past four years, we learned to balance not only our time, but also our strengths, weaknesses, and life amidst COVID. Maybe we're still working on seeing the few glimmers of good that came out of the past two years. Maybe it was a new hobby, some time alone to think and reflect, some extra time with people who are close to you, or even a new appreciation for the small things, like seeing people in person maskless. Whatever it was, we found some good in the bad. A month before the pandemic hit, my best friend that I met here at the University of Guelph and I went to Vietnam. We got tattoos, mine being the yin yang, a Buddhist symbol for equilibrium, showing balance, and that in the dark there is light, and in the light there is dark. We were at the peak of our lives, excited for the future and happy within a month of that, all of our lives completely changed. The point here is that we will not be able to avoid bad things, but the lesson is that within the bad, there is some good, even if you sometimes need to look a little harder. Four, take small bites. <laughs> small bites, A, prevent choking. <laughs> yeah, it's an obvious one. And B, helps you to appreciate different flavors of foods. A faculty advisor for my team's capstone project once told us, it's not about having one large epiphany, it's about having many small ones. This was obviously in the context of our design project and making sure we spent time with small goals um, and achievements rather than expecting everything to come together all at once. I think this is transferable to our lives. It's not about expecting to know all the answers right now or expecting everything to make sense, but rather through smaller mini epiphanies and small bites that we will progress and reach our desired goal. In a nutshell, don't worry about always taking big bites. Celebrate the small feeds or things that make you smile like a massive slice of pizza and recognize that you don't need to make sense of everything all at once or even right now. I'm hungry now. <laughs> and five, change the way you think about food. After you eat, your body goes to work digesting the food. All of those awesome nutrients have a role in the body. Everything you eat in one way or another becomes a little part of what you are. Similar to food that passes and becomes part of what we are, the University of Guelph has played a role in its lives and become part of who we are. And now as graduating students, we are ready for our next meal or our next set of experiences. The past few years have been filled with little and large experiences this graduation being one of them. Take a moment to reflect on the smaller experiences, the ones that you may not have really thought about how they shaped you, but in some way have. Maybe it was seeing Bill Nye building a snowman on Johnston Green with an international student and feeling like it was also your first time seeing snow, asking your Aggie friends to teach you how to dance to Cotton Eye Joe, 
meeting a cute boy at that part time job, painting the cannon overnight and going to class the next day, going camping with strangers and leaving as best friends, cycling between your bed and desk for just about all of COVID, or sharing an espresso with your best friend at 3 p.m. And the list continues. When I travel, something I do is try the most exotic foods. Although authentic to the culture, it's very different than what I'm used to. This is usually met with the reaction of, how did you do that? But I'm never really asked why. Why do I do this? First and foremost, I enjoy experiencing all that a culture has to offer. One of those things being food. Second, I do this because I know in some way it has opened my mind and challenged me to set aside what I'm comfortable with or used to. I like to take that energy and apply it to the rest of my life. In my own terms, I call it unnecessary character building. I coined this term after working my first job at 14, when I quickly learned that work is actually hard. And needless to say, every job after that one has been an improvement. Some other examples of unnecessary character building you may have experienced include wiping out on Johnston Green in the winter, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the slight panic on WebAdvisor once a semester when course selection rolls around, <laughs> yeah, 200 students clicking submit at the same time, like not fun, <laughs> or realizing you spent more time waiting in a Starbucks line at the library than you did actually studying there. <laughs> Another example is COVID. Fill out this card. When COVID hit, I missed out on blank. Although we may not realize it, this made us at least a tad stronger, perhaps a little more socially awkward, yeah, and will make for a good story in the future. I once had a friend tell me, don't live for the moment, live for the stories afterward. You can take that with a grain of salt. Unnecessary character building is the kind of stuff that makes you a better person despite you knowing it at the time. As we graduate, remember that no experience is wasted. It might just be a little unnecessary character building to prepare you for the next best thing in your life. And in doing this, we must keep in mind the value of variety, balance, and our perspective that goes into selecting just which experiences will benefit us the most. I chose the topic of food today because I'm Italian. And food always brought my family together, which is what I'm trying to do today with the 2022 graduating class. I'd like to revisit the phrase, you are what you eat. I hope that after 10 minutes, of attempting to draw parallels between experiences and food, you realize that the same phrase applies to our experiences. I'd like to rewrite it as, you are what you experience. And now let's add some fluff for our non-technical writers out there. You are a marvelous and unique collection of your experiences. And toss that in Grammarly once. Yep, forgot that, eh? And now adapt it for a discussion post. Wow, <laughs> great discussion. <laughs> I would agree that we are impacted by our experiences. <laughs> Moral of the story, you are not only what you eat, you are what you experience. <laughs> and as much as I will say, congratulations to each of you. What I really want to say, is I wish you a million more unnecessary character building experiences. The kind that shape you into unique and inspiring human being that improves life. So, congratulations Griffins. Continue to learn from food and completely unrelated, but don't forget to scoop those benefits on your alumni card. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Tiana, for reminding us to take small bites in our learning and in our journey. Uh, and that also reminds me that we do, for those in, here in person, we do have a reception afterwards. So take small bites, uh, don't choke. Uh, while also pursuing the variety of experiences and balancing our strengths and weaknesses, some of the lessons that you've taught us. Thank you, Tiana. So as many of you may recall, graduating students, you were invited to vote for the faculty member you wanted to hear. While only one faculty is lecturing this evening, I wanted to share with you the list of those who are voted as a top 10 faculty alongside tonight's lecturer. They represent three of our seven colleges and a range of academic disciplines. They are Dr. Kathleen Rodenberg from Hospitality, Food and Tourism Management, Dr. Ian Spears from Political Science, 
Dr. Andy Robinson from Animal Biosciences, Dr. Andrea Breen from Family Relations and Applied Nutrition, Dr. Carl Hennig from Psychology, AJ Sharma from Political Science, Dr. John Lozon from Environmental Sciences, Rob McLean from Marketing and Consumer Studies, and Dr. Laura Forbes from Family Relations and Applied Nutrition. Congratulations to all the faculty that were nominated. It's obvious that we have some fantastic people teaching at our university. So thank you to each of you for being the kind of instructor that students remember, for being the mentor, the role models, that past, present, and future Griffins can continue to rely on. This year's faculty lecturer is someone who has been on the top 10 faculty, li faculty list many times before. During the voting process, students also had the option to provide a comment that were passed along to the faculty. For Dr. Benke Cook, one student was quoted as saying, she 100% understands what it's like to be a student. She is so caring, kind, funny, relatable, and the way she teaches is super engaging. Another student said she's motivational, encouraging, supportive, uplifting, and inspirational. She has always been a huge support to all her students, offering her words of wisdom every time you see her. She has a radiant, beautiful soul with a big heart. Dr. Binky Cook earned her PhD from McMaster University, where she focused on youth risk behaviors, and more specifically, on how families, schools, and the larger community have an impact on the choices youth make about early school leaving substance use and misuse, and sexual relationships. She also completed a postdoctoral fellowship with the Faculty of Medicine at McMaster, where she studied the impact of poverty on health outcomes for youth and their families. Her experiences in these academic environments led her to launch her entrepreneurial career, where she determined that she would step in the gap and provide youth, youth with up-to-date relevant and factual health information so that they could make informed decisions about their health and well-being. She subsequently authored and implemented peer mentor led youth risk behavior interventions in several board of education in the province of Ontario. She continues to provide audiences in the education, sport and business communities with her signature talks that focus on resiliency, living in authentic life, embracing the now and recognizing that adverse adversities can be opportunities. She believes that seemingly challenging experiences can be transformative and that they can oftentimes teach us more than our successes do. Dr. Benke Cook believes that we can be stronger than before and often shares her own life's journey that includes raising four children while attending grad school, owning a food truck for a time, loving her life as a lecturer here at the University of Guelph in the Department of Sociology and Anthropology, where she primarily teaches large first year classes, and kicking cancer's ass after being diagnosed with breast cancer just over 10 years ago. Her motto, today is a new day, lies bare her heartfelt belief that every day brings a fresh new beginning and that embracing it with joy and gratitude enriches one's own life, as well as the lives of those around us. Dr. Banky Cook is a lifelong Hamiltonian, currently enjoying life in the downtown core with her husband, Gordy, and their four children, now young adults, along with their three dogs, Gunner, Stella, Baxter, and one cool cat named Elliot. It is with great pleasure that I introduce this year's faculty last lecturer, Dr. Deanna Banky Cook. Holy smokes, kids. <laughs> wow. Wow. I'm shaking. I, I, you know, I really, I have, I don't even really know where to start with you all. I, I'm just so, so blessed to be here. And I'm so very, very happy for you all. Um, it's an incredible, an amazing accomplishment. Um, for me, when Jay let me know that I actually had this opportunity to speak with you all today, I cried. I was like, because these are my babies, you know, I call you all my beauties and my darlings and that I love you and I hope you know that I do and that I will do anything that I possibly can for you all the way through your university career and you certainly know where to find me if you need a job reference. You can get in touch. Um, I do feel incredibly grateful to have this opportunity to talk with you one last time as UOG students uh, before you are graduates. And I guess I should hit the little go button. Here we go. So first of all, I want to say congratulations. What an incredible, incredible accomplishment, achievement, 
you know, Tani did such a great job just highlighting the student adventures and the lives and all the beautiful things that you've learned and done and experienced, not only in the classroom, but outside the classroom and with your peers and your colleagues and the faculty and administrative staff here. We're just so very proud of you. I do want to start by saying, though, that you are incredible. And I mean that sincerely. Take a moment to just consider what it is that you've accomplished over these last could be three, four, five or more years. Unbelievably so challenges in the past two years, most particularly given our COVID experience pandemic that no one has ever experienced in quite this way before. And you persevered. Not only did you face lockdowns, perhaps felt isolated, moved between virtual and face to face classes and all the changes that that brought. We're back. We're not. We're up. We're down. We're in. We're out. But you also faced your own personal worries and concerns, and I know that you did because many of you shared those with me. You were worried about your own health and well-being. You were worried about your family members. You were worried about your sick roommate. You were worried about our country and Globally speaking, we have so many students from international um, countries as well. So you told me about those and I know that you were very concerned. I would like to, however, point out that Tiana pointed out as well is that now you have skills that you may not have had before, right? You know how to communicate with others, whether near or far in real time. Accomplish collaborative or personal goals. And that maybe is one of the silver linings uh, of this dark cloud that we have faced together, that you now have these skills. I would encourage you to tuck these acknowledgements into your heart and remember them when you face challenges in the future. You overcame when you didn't think you could. Breathe in this moment and recognize and respect your own experiences. And I hope you feel joyful and hopeful and that you are so very, very proud of yourselves because we are incredibly proud of you. We are incredibly proud of you. Here are a few thoughts that I would like to share for this last lecture. I'm not gonna be as informative as Tiana has been with the food situation, <laughs> but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with my jam. And for those of you who know me, you know I'm all about living your authentic life. And the first point that I would really like to leave with you is to really entirely and most wholeheartedly encourage you to live your authentic life. Living your authentic life means living the life that you see for yourself, not living the life that someone else thinks you should. Nor should you listen to people who try to convince you to be someone other than yourself. You don't need permission to be you, you already are. Nor listen to people. Oh, wait a minute. Long, wrong slide. You already are. The point is, is you are wonderful and fabulous exactly as you are sitting in this moment. And when you live your authentic life, you are more likely to be resilient. Meaning when you come up against challenges, hardships, failures, losses, frustrations, and you're living your authentic life, you're far more likely to pick yourself up and keep moving because you have your eye on where it is that you're going. I would also like to suggest to you that these challenges are opportunities in disguise. And it may not feel that way at the time when we come up against challenges. What do we do? We problem solve. We use our skills, our knowledge, all the fabulous things you've you've learned here at the University of Guelph, working with your peers, working with your colleagues, working with your teammates working with your mentors. And you take that knowledge and you apply it and it becomes the building block or the stepping stone to make your way through to the very next opportunity that's coming your way that you needed to have the skills to be able to meet that opportunity. Next, and this is a big one kids. Never, 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 never let tell what anybody tell you that what you want to do or achieve or accomplish isn't realistic. How many of you have been told that? That's not realistic. Hands in the air, kids see. Now here, I'm just gonna say to you, how would they know? How would they know what's realistic? 
The only things that are real or true are the things that have happened already. Everything else is a possibility and the possibilities in this world are limitless, absolutely limitless. See, the point is, is that you have gifts and talents and vision and hopes and dreams that other people can't see or feel because they don't belong to them. They belong to you. They are uniquely yours and we need you. How could they possibly know how you feel and how you envision your future? They would have no way of knowing. And I would urge you to keep going. When your heart calls you to move in a particular direction, to seek something out, new beginnings, challenges, don't be afraid, keep going. Here's a big one. Be kind and loving and gentle to people, but never let anyone steal your dreams because it makes them feel uncomfortable. Yes, they may be well-meaning. They may have ideas for you that you never had for yourself, but you have your dreams for a reason, to use your gifts, your intellect, your humor, your voice, your talents, to share those with people. The gifts are for you to give away, not to hang on to. If somebody is uncomfortable with you using their gift, it's not theirs, it's yours. And it's yours to serve others with in whatever it is that you do, to serve people, to heal people, to comfort people, to grow, to teach, to lift up, to bring joy in whatever way. We need you and you are irreplaceable. So if you ever feel you are invisible, I promise you, you are not invisible because I can see you. <laughs> as you grow be excellent in all that you do in all that you say and all that you try and being excellent means you do your best always not only in your work but in your life be kind share lift others up love people listen be empathetic and on a more practical note Please don't throw your gum onto the street and put your shopping cart away. <laughs> Understand too that you are a human being, not a human doing. Recognize that as you do your best, some days your best is gonna be better than others. And give yourself a little grace, it's okay. It's okay, be kind to yourself. I would also like to remind you that it's always today. And today, kids, is a new day. It isn't yesterday and we don't live in tomorrow. We live in the here and now. Be mindful and fully present in all that you do today and every day. Take a minute to enjoy that $7 coffee you just bought that you waited in <laughs> Starbucks for and didn't even get to study. And for the love of God, try not to worry so much, kids. It's going to be okay. It serves no purpose, and all it does is suck the joy out of your life. Have we discovered this yet? <laughs> Try instead to be hopeful, and yeah, you do need to put the work into accomplishing whatever it is that you desire in your life, but when you're joyful and you're hopeful, it's a sweeter way to live, I promise you. This is a big one. Never forget. You can always make more money, but you cannot make more time. Your time is non-refundable. Oh, did it go? It's not going. Technical difficulties, kids. You, it, time is, is non-refundable. Be mindful of who you spend your time with and what you're doing with your time. And certainly don't waste it with people who disrespect you or who try to gauge your worth because you are not a commodity. I'm going to try again. <laughs> what time? This way. I'm resilient. <laughs> Plus, I'm wearing my talking shoes, which almost killed me to walk across here. So there they are. <laughs> 
I don't know, Jay, can you be my wingman? <laughs> Oh, we'll just forward it by manually. Or not? <gasps> Time is non refund. There we go. Oh, thanks, Jay. You're a king. I love Jay. <laughs> All right, let's just keep moving. We are not a commodity. Okay. Turning off. Also, living with gratitude is a beautiful way to live. I live with gratitude. Jay shared. You know, I had the cancer adventure 10 years ago, breast cancer, breast cancer, uh, five rounds of chemo, double mastectomy, 25 blasts of radiation, you know, uh, reconstructive surgery after surgery after surgery. I just wanted to look normal. And I learned an incredibly valuable lesson then is that we are entitled to nothing. We think we are but we only have so much time and where we spend it and how we spend it and when we spend it with gratitude, it makes things so much more lovely. So living with gratitude is a beautiful way to live. Look around, take in the joy that this life brings. It sure brings sadness as well, but know that that isn't permanent either. Nothing in this life is, but it is always full of new beginnings. And that's what the dawn brings. When you need it, ask for help. Asking for help does not make you look weak or foolish. It shows that you are courageous and determined. And to be honest, does it really matter what random people think of you? Does it? No. No. You are not their business. Be cautious about the entitlement trap. Feeling entitled is a surefire way to live feeling miserable and like you are owed something. We are not. We cannot even control the way that our hearts beat, so don't waste your day in frustration because somebody took your spot or they made it through the light before you and then it turned red. You'll get your turn eventually, right? And finally, it's never a bad idea to be the best dressed person in the room. <laughs> and by that, I mean show up like it matters. It does matter. When you go someplace and you're listening to someone speak or you're in a meeting or with your colleagues or with your friends or your family, when you show up as your best self, you tell them they matter to you. That said, early morning coffee runs and late night ice cream jaunts and taking a day off doesn't qualify here. Then you can look any way you like. <laughs> and to close, be adventurous, love people, do your best, fear less and hope more. And try not to compare your journey to anybody else's because you're not going that way. You're on your own path. And to be sure, give yourself a little grace, celebrate and be happy. You deserve it. And we love you from the bottom of our hearts. Godspeed, Griffins. All right. Thanks, Dr. Becky Cook, for the inspirational lecture and for the, remi the reminder that time is valuable and each day is a new day. Now, to our next and final lecture of the evening, Rich Appia. Rich is a graduate of Osgood Hall Law School. He, pre he previously studied at the University of Guelph as a President's Scholar and completed his Honours Bachelor of Arts degree in 2002 with a prize in political science. During his time at Guelph, he became a recipient of the Brian D. Sullivan Award for Student Leadership. As a student, he was president of Interhall Council, a senator, and a member of the Central Student Association Board of Directors. In his last semester, Rich chaired the very first last lecture planning committee. Today, Rich Appiah is a lawyer and founder of Appiah Law, Employment and Labor Council. 
He provides expert legal advice and representation to businesses, managers, and senior executives. Rich has published extensively in the area of employment law. He frequently speaks at conferences for human resources and legal professionals and provides legal commentary in various news media, including the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. His recent papers and presentations have addressed ethical issues in employment law, workplace privacy, and workplace violence and harassment. In 2016, he was recognized as a lawyer to watch by Lexpert magazine, and in 2019 and 2020, as a leading practitioner in employment law by the Canadian Legal Lexpert Dictionary. Rich is the former president of Dalal Youth Services, an agency that provides mental health supports to children and youth. He is also chair of the board of directors of the STEPS Initiative, an award-winning public arts organization. Rich also serves on the board of governors of the University of Guelph and the Ontario Bar Association's Employment and Labor Law Section Executive. I'm pleased to welcome and invite Rich Appia. As Jay mentioned, 20 years ago, I stood on the stage of War Memorial Hall to host the very first last lecture. Earlier today, Tiana mentioned to me that she was two when that happened. <laughs> I imagine some of you were as well. Like today, the hall was packed, was filled with students, faculty, staff, and alumni who assembled together to celebrate the achievements of the graduating class. Times have certainly changed, most obviously because a global pandemic, the first of its kind in over 100 years, has caused a disruption in our life that no one could have imagined back then. As a result, some of you are joining me here today live and some of you are watching online. Wherever you're joining me from, know that a community of Griffins here at the University of Guelph and beyond is no less proud of you than it was of me and my fellow students so many years ago. Class of 2022, congratulations. In a few weeks, you'll write your final exam, submit your final paper, complete your final lab. Yay. <laughs> it's okay to clap too. <laughs> You'll close the chapter of your under, undergrad experience and enter a world that's different than the one that you know now. Most of you will no longer need to plan your life in increments of quarterly four month semesters and the reading lists and the assignments will be gone. Yay. <laughs> More than ever before, you'll get to choose your own adventure. The months and years ahead will be some of the most exciting of your life. And with so many life decisions ahead of you, they could also be the most confusing. You'll find yourself asking yourself and others, where do I start? Am I on the right track? How do I succeed? I've known that I was going to give the alumnus last lecture for at least two years now. I wanted to stand here today and answer some of these questions for you. So to prepare, I listened to the commencement addresses of some notable figures like Barack Obama, Oprah Winfrey, Ellen DeGeneres, and Conan O'Brien. They all had something different to say. And so I found no help there. <laughs> to be honest, it was kind of annoying. <laughs> the truth is that each of us steps into the world with different experiences, with different fears and different strengths. We all aspire to do different things. I can't tell you that there is a set formula for success, however that's defined. No one can. You, you have to find the answers inside of yourself. You've got to start with you. 
So many experiences of self-discovery define who I am today. An important one occurred immediately after I left university to start law school in Toronto. What a shock to my system that was. I was suddenly surrounded by uber competitive people, so many of them having graduated at the tops of their classes, accomplished in so many ways imaginable. Most challenging was the cynicism that I met in some of my classmates. I left U of G with the greatest of friends who cared deeply about me and the world. In law school, understanding who was and wasn't a friend was difficult for me. That fact was, was amplified by the passing comment of a classmate of mine who said to me out loud, Rich, I could tell that you felt alienated, but it wasn't my problem. So for the first time in years, I didn't fit in and I was so alone. I fell into a deep depression in that first year and it took me a long time to climb out of it. Part of my recovery involved my coming to terms with the fact that I'm gay. Now the experience of coming out felt like someone ripped the floor from underneath me, causing me to tumble through a bottomless pit. I slowly came out to my friends, starting with my closest here at the U of G and starting with my old roommate, Mark, who I hope is listening here today. <laughs> now, Mark was a scary jock. We like to joke about the time that he hid the dirty dishes of one of our roommates in our roommate's bed. But I thought if I could come out to him, I could come out to anyone. <laughs> what I learned from that experience was that he would stand by me without any hesitation. He took my call every single day for four months, sometimes twice a day. And he ne never let, he never gave a hint that he had somewhere else to be. I want you to take this moment to look at the friend sitting next to you. Actually do it. <laughs> you can stare into their eyes, you can hold their hands. Okay, now you can stop. There is a very good chance that the person you're sitting next to right now is going to be your best friend forever. Literally. <laughs> I left Guelph with a few. I stood with them at their weddings. I'm friends with some of their kids. I've helped them through times of crisis and they've done the same for me. The greatest gift that I ever gave myself was to be myself with them. As you sit with your friends, I would encourage you to laugh with them, to cry with them, yes, to drink with them, <laughs> but whatever you do, do it authentically. Now, the advice, just be yourself, is so often easily given as if being yourself comes with an on switch. It doesn't. Sometimes the experience Sometimes the understanding takes a while and sometimes it's triggered by the hardest things, by the weirdest things too. For me, it was the sound of footsteps. In my 30s, I worked in an office with hardwood floors and my desk was arranged so that my back was facing the door as I was working. I was there one day in my office when I heard the, the sound of footsteps approaching my door. They were the footsteps of a coworker of mine, Chris. Chris was a tall guy who weighed about 240 pounds and his footsteps got louder and louder. There was something about them that put me on edge. And when Chris finally arrived at my office and knocked on my door, I sat up in my chair in a state of shock. It is really hard for me to talk about the home that I grew up in. It's hard, hard for me to talk about the footsteps of my enraged father as he stomped to my bedroom door in bursts of anger. 
It's hard for me to talk about the screaming and the yelling, the fists and the hitting, and the deafening silence that would permeate our little home for weeks on end. It was a scary place to be, and I didn't come to realize its impact on me until after I understood that in my own mind, the sound of the footsteps of a colleague who I loved very much were the same as the sound of my father's footsteps. Many of you grew up in safe and secure households. Some of you didn't. And for the purposes of what I wanna tell you today, I don't think it really matters. Your life experiences have shaped you in ways you may not understand right now, and yet your success in whatever you do, particularly as a partner, as a friend or a parent, will depend on your willingness to explore what makes you tick. After I, understand, after I understood what the sound of footsteps meant to me, I came to realize that some aspects of my personality reflected a childhood that was spent under near constant tension. Why am I so insensitive? Sensitive, not insensitive. <laughs> Why am I so impatient? Why am I so driven? Why can't I defy the laws of gravity and actually fly? <laughs> Exploring the answers to those questions helped me to understand my limits and helped me to change the things about myself that I wanted to change. They helped me to become a better person. Now, in telling you this, I am not suggesting that you spend the years ahead thinking about the ways that you should change yourself. You are resilient. You are intelligent. You are courageous. Those qualities that have brought you this far are qualities that your older self will rely upon as life's choices become more challenging. I am constantly looking to my younger self for inspiration. In fact, it was my fearless younger self who convinced me years ago to quit a great job to start my own business. I was 39 at the time, working at a great, working at a great firm with fantastic colleagues and making good money. And yet I found myself asking what's next. As I wondered what it would be like to start my own law firm, I began asking myself a question that can be paralyzing. What if I fail? What if I fail? What if I fail? Each time you take a risk and win, you build upon a pattern of success that serves as a platform for greater achievement. But as it's often said, winning doesn't come easily. That's a lesson that I learned early in life. What if I fail was a question that I'd ask myself when I was younger, but it didn't stop me from doing interesting things. As you get older though, the question, what if I fail, takes on greater significance, as if the odds of winning decrease with age and experience. It's really, really silly. And yet, that's what I was thinking as I was considering starting my own practice. As I thought about going on, out on my own, it was my younger self who convinced me that no matter how old you are, life is long enough to recover from your losses, but too short not to chase your own dreams. That was four and a half years ago, and I have never looked back, not for a nanosecond. I am the happiest that I've ever been because I listened to the guy who sat in the chair that you are sitting in right now. Griffins, graduating from university is an incredible accomplishment and you have much to be proud of. I hope you're proudest of the person you've become along the way and I hope you'll be prouder still of the person you will become in the future. The path ahead is yours if you choose yourself, trust yourself, and push yourself as you forge ahead. To paraphrase the words of the poet, William Ernest Henley, you are the master of your fate. You are the captain of your soul. It is my honor to be here today. Thank you.
Thank you, Rich, for your words of encouragement and strength. You've taught us that life is too short not to chase our dreams. So to close off our evening, I'd like to invite back Irene Thompson, our interim vice provost, student affairs. Wow, hard acts to follow. What an honor it's been to participate today in the last lecture event. I'd like to congratulate our speakers, Tiana, Dr. Deanna, and Rich. What an honor to experience the university, the community, and your wisdom. I would also like to acknowledge the work of our student experience team, particularly those individuals who work so hard to make this event happen and to allow us to spend time together in person and virtually, marking this important milestone and celebration. Class of 2022 Griffins, I will always remember you with fondness and pride. You've spent half your academic journey under challenging circumstances, yet you maintained your quality, your character, and have stayed true to our Griffin values. You have remained respectful in the face of adversity and uncertainty. You've exhibited your caring nature by supporting each other when, challenge, when the challenges were overwhelming. You remain determined to complete your degree despite the many pivots you were required to make. You engaged with your coursework, student experience opportunities, and community, both virtually and in person. And you remained authentic. That's a word that was used a lot today. You remained authentic, helping your community maintain that special Guelphiness that makes us unique. In mythical lore, a griffin guards a kingdom's riches and priceless artifacts. At the U of G, I will say that our most priceless artifact is our community. Your legacy, Class of 2022 Griffins, has been to preserve, protect, and contribute to our wonderful community, despite the barriers that the COVID pandemic has presented. It has been a privilege to have you as members of our community. I wish you great success as you complete your academic work and move into the next stage of your life and career journey. Your University of Guelph experience has shaped you as a person, a scholar, and a citizen. As a person, you've grown and developed into an individual that's autonomous and ready to make their way in the world. As a scholar, you've been presented with opportunities to explore ideas and understandings of how things work with the hope that it has instilled in you a passion for lifelong learning. As citizens, you've experienced both the individual and the collective responsibilities required for communities to succeed and to thrive. Class of 2022 Griffins, your academic goals are within grasp. In a few short weeks, you'll have completed your exams and will be making plans for convocation. Your degree will soon be yours. The completion of undergrad doesn't mean that we have an end to our relationship with the University of Guelph. We invite you to continue your relationship with us as a member of our alumni family. As alumni, there will be a volunteer and leadership opportunities, whether it be joining the University of Guelph Alumni Association, perhaps providing leadership as a member of the Board of Governors like Rich does, or um, speaking to first year students or participating in Senate, or participating in house calls, or writing letters to first year students, encouraging them as they move into their first set of exams. We welcome you to be our champion, sharing your experience with prospective students, encouraging employers to hire a Guelph grad or a Guelph student, participating as that alumni speaker. Come back to campus, visit us often, the alumni affairs people will make lots of opportunities for you to do that. As you leave us, remember the skills, knowledge and values your time at Guelph has provided you. The memories of your challenges may fade, but the memories of the good times will be there for you and remain strong. Griffins, you are ready. Your future looks bright. Go out and make your mark. We'll be cheering for you. Remember, you're a student for a short time, but you are a griffin for life. Thank you and congratulations.
All right, and that ends our formal event for this evening. Thank you, Irene. As a friendly reminder, the Peter Clark Hall wings will start to open and you'll be, uh, food will be revealed for you <laughs> all to enjoy. Uh, they are takeout boxes, uh, not to consume here. Uh, as well, if you haven't got a chance, please connect with Alumni Affairs and Development uh, to get your alumni card. Check out our CUDA board, share with us your favorite Griffin memories. And thank you all so much for joining us this evening.